Hey everybody, how you doing today? My name's Travis. Uh, got it for about $280 shipped to the house. The overall inspection, when it first arrived, I'm not doing an unboxing as you can see here. There's plenty of those online. There was just a little bit of damage on the shroud right here where my hand is. Other than that, it arrived in pretty decent shape. Uh, I like to take these engines apart, these cheap engines apart and inspect them, clean them out before I try to put them in service. Um, I've already disassembled this thing down a ways, and as I was doing so, I wound up taking some torque wrenches. Um, I wanted to check how tight the fasteners were as I disassembled it, so when I put it back together, I was able to put it back together, you know, pretty close to what the factory had them. Um, but in doing so, what I found out is the, the fasteners on this thing, the tightening torque specs that came from the factory are an absolute train wreck. Uh, we had fasteners, everything from barely finger tight to so over torqued. Uh, I, I, I stopped trying to see how tight they had it because I know I would strip some of these small fasteners if I kept going. So uh, I'm also going to go ahead and put a reassembly video. In that reassembly video, uh, I plan on tearing down, gonna go ahead and do a inspection of the, of the head. We're gonna pull the valves out, we're gonna measure the valves, take a real good look at this thing. Um, I'm also gonna measure cylinder. I have bore gauges, uh, measure pistons, rings, and that way I can get a pretty good idea of what would actually fit or not fit later on uh, Need I, if I need to service this thing. And I'm also gonna put together uh, the torch specs that, that I think this thing should go for, or, or go uh, back together with, that would at least make things tighten down equally or close to specs of what a, a typical Japanese engine is. Uh, most of the, you know, almost all these fasteners are going into uh, an aluminum material, you know, more or less like a, a typical Japanese engine. So we're gonna start off, I'm gonna show you the air filter. It just has a uh, little cover, twist top cover. There's a thumb screw that goes in. You have a silencer, swirl silencer, an air filter. That's what you have inside this unit. There is also a rubber seal down inside. I'm gonna go ahead, I've already looked at this. It, it, it looks of decent quality. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together because this can come off as a unit unless you're needing to service the air filter. I would definitely service this air filter fairly frequently, if nothing else, uh, just to verify that your wing nut is not backing off from the vibration of your engine. I can definitely see, if you over tighten this thing, I'm afraid you would crack the plastic. You know, the design's not bad. I know it would work really well on an air-cooled engine. However, this thing's gonna vibrate a whole lot more. Uh, I usually lay out, try to start laying out the majority of my tools uh, that I can find, uh, my normal fasteners, that way I don't go ha have to go searching in the toolbox. So the first thing we're gonna take off, the fuel line. It's over here. Another trick that I typically do is I'll, and I'll do it in the direction of flow on the side of this thing. Um, this just uses a pair of basic pair of pliers. Just, there's one down here also on the fuel pump. Remove it. All right, next thing we're gonna take, this thing's got two retainers. It's got a retainer bracket right here with two screws, okay? The, uh, those two screws are gonna be 10 millimeter. Uh, you'll use a 10 millimeter socket. Now, some of these fasteners are already loose. Because after I started disassembling and I realized how much of a train wreck this thing was and I wanted to, to help people understand what's going on here and to make sure that you have a good guide to take this thing apart and put it back together, that uh, I just reassembled the thing by hand and that way I could put everything in order. Actually make it also go a little quicker for you. All right, I've removed the bracket. Spin this around. There are two little, uh, there are a couple of rubber pieces that uh, go on the uh, bracket. You can remove the tank a little bit as you see, 
there is a return line from your fuel injector back to the tank. We need to remove this return line. Pulling up close to the nipple, trying to make sure that we don't damage it. This is actually a, a really pretty simple little designed engine. I'm removing also the other uh, tank bits of kind of a rubber, plasticky rubber uh, grommet to kind of hold that tank in or pad. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove the entire air filter assembly. And all that is is two eight millimeter screws. And when I say eight millimeter, talking at the, it's an eight millimeter socket. Or actually a six millimeter thread. There is a paper gasket. You can see that it just fell. This paper gasket is dry. It, it fell off the first time I took it off. It's in good shape. Now this engine does have some writing on it uh, in English. And those two areas that I found in English is, it says diesel. And over here on the side, it says stop. That's pretty much it. All right, we wanna go ahead now and take off the uh, exhaust. It's right here. We have uh, two screws on that, and we need it to be a 10 millimeter socket. These do have lock washers on them. As you can see, the gasket right there, it stayed affixed. This, these machines have been ran, or at least this one's been ran. I don't know if they all come from the same factory or not. Some people think that all Chinese engines that look a lot come this, uh, from the same factory, but that is definitely not the case. Some do, some don't. Now, it looks like we are uh, taking off the fuel injector line. Uh, I did notice that was one thing when I took this engine apart. It actually was tightened up pretty well. It's a 17 millimeter inch. It's, it's bent to, to an angle that I don't think you could put it on upside down. Um, however, just in case, it does have, you'll see an anodized fitting and then on the bottom, you'll see the uh, silver fitting. Silver fitting goes to the bottom. Next thing we're gonna be removing, we're gonna go ahead and remove the injector. This is one of the big things that I noticed when I took it apart the first time. One of these, uh, one of these nuts on top of here that's holding the uh, uh, fuel injector in, one of those retainer nuts, it was finger tight. The other one was so tight, I was afraid to check the torque anymore. I was afraid I was gonna pull a thread. So it's like, okay, this thing's out of, out of whack. We're just taking it apart. Now, uh, by the way, these are uh, 14 millimeter. A while ago when I reassembled it, I just left them finger tight. Couple lock washers. Now you do wanna be careful when you remove this fuel injector. You have this fuel injector retainer, this right here, this just kind of clamps down, just pushes down on that uh, to, to help seal that injector. When you pull this injector out, you have your injector. And you have a steel insert. which I'm trying to remove right here. Let's see if I can get it with this ink pen. Right here, it just fits inside the aluminum part of the head. And inside this insert is a little thin copper washer. Something else I noticed uh, when I looked down in the hole, it almost, since this thing, when they test fired it, it wasn't real tight. And you can see how it had blew a, uh, a little bit of exhaust gas past this thing and up the side of this bushing just a little bit. So it definitely was not seated correctly on installation. Number seven, okay. Uh, this is something here uh, later, we will definitely go more into it. 
looking at the top of this cover, there's an anodized cover on, on uh, top of your tappet tab cover. There's a plate. And I'm removing the four Phillips, number two Phillips screws. And what we have inside here is a little reed valve. Uh, what, what I believe that this is your crankcase ventilation. And this is something you definitely will probably have to inspect from time to time. These engines, I'm more than likely, I'm pretty sure if you run them a lot, that you're going to need to decoke them every once in a while. So this will be something you'll want to remove. And if you look inside right here, underneath this metal tab, what that does is it, it prevents that pedal valve. It, it only lets it go up so far. The pedal valve seats on the bottom of the plate. And as it runs, it'll allow it to come up and hit this to stop it. And it's, it's more or less a one-way valve for uh, ventilation for fumes. Uh, there is a port right here. And that port drops down the side of this cover, uh, or the tappet cover, and goes into your intake string. And so that'll be something that you will probably need to clean from time to time. Tappet cover's next. Tappet cover, you need an eight millimeter. Now there is a uh, paper gasket underneath this thing you want to be careful with. It's, it's, it's not completely loose. It's loose up here on top. It's still attached, you know, kind of seated in over here where the uh, screws were. Now if you look, uh, this is going to be your decompression lever. It's going to push on this uh, valve, excuse me, to open that valve up just a little bit to allow this thing to rotate around much easier to start it. And you can see that little hole right there. Let me get my ink pen. This hole is what I was talking about. It comes here through this channel, out right here. It goes in right here into your intake, intake track. You can see the drilled hole inside that intake track. So like I said, I'm positive that that thing will probably get dirty from time to time and have to be clean. Now, a lot of times you can just use a uh, degreaser, something like that, uh, sometimes a little easy bake oven cleaner and clean the uh, deposits off of there and then just spray it off with some brake cleaner or something like that, clean it off. You usually won't have to remove that pedal valve. All right. Next thing we're removing, uh, we have the uh, shroud. Um, we're gonna, oh, I'm sorry, the pull start. Pull start, we have, uh, those are 10 millimeters. 10 millimeter socket is what you need. You could probably remove this, or, or uh, take this off with your uh, main air shroud, but I'm gonna wind up disassembling this and make sure that there's enough lubrication inside that. This The uh, pull start on these, it is going to take quite a uh, beating because this thing's got quite a bit of compression. I think it's 23 to one or something like that if I remember. So I wanna make sure that my pull start is in really good shape. And again, we will disassemble this thing all the way down later. Right now we're just doing a general tear down. Uh, next thing we now, now we're gonna go ahead and remove your primary air shroud. I uh, will be turning this toward me. There are a numerous amount of fasteners. Uh, we have 10, I'm sorry, we have uh, seven screws on the shroud and they need an eight millimeter socket. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this a little bit sideways so I can see what I'm doing.
The shroud, oh, by the way, the uh, pull start on this thing and the shroud are actually thicker material. I, I mean, I, I know it needs to be for how hard you're gonna be pulling, but I was actually kind of impressed that they, they made it that thick. 